The views, information, and opinions expressed during the following program are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent the views of Access Communications, its representatives, or its employees. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2024 State of the City event from the City of North Battleford. I know that we're still getting some people coming in from the buffet, and that is A-OK. -okay. Uh, the mayor is going to be taking this stage momentarily, but first, let's give a round of applause to Epic Catering for the fantastic meal. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Warren Williams to come to the stage and introduce our guest of honor. Well, thank you, Candace, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I I'd like to start with, I, I first met his worship when uh, his name was just David, you know? At that time, he was the new director of finance for the city of North Battleford, and we met to review a contract for services. And when I say review, I mean we reviewed this, you know, in great detail. And that's where I learned, you know, David likes detail, literally every detail. It was enjoyable to work with someone that cared about details because, frankly, details matter. I enjoyed getting to know David better over the next few years. We did a little bit of golfing. He's never won. He's come close a couple times. But I also learned why he chose to move back to the Battlefords to raise his family. I'm sure he'll tell you about that, or he has told you about that. I'll leave that up to Dave. But in June of 2017, David went off into the wilderness. Well, not really the wilderness. He ended up at our neighbor to the south, the town of Battleford, just across the river. We continued over the course of uh, these years how to make the Battlefords the best place to live, work, and play. One time during a North Star game, David uh, would often come and join me. And one day he shows up to me and he goes, Warren, I'm thinking of letting my name stand for mayor. In my head, I responded with, are you crazy? But I think what I replied with was, well, tell me why. And his answer resonated with me, much like the answer of why he chose to come back and raise his family in the Battleford resonated with me. David cares about this, cares about our community. Four years later, now, in the last year of his term as mayor, it is my honor to introduce a person I am proud to call a friend. Please join me in welcoming to the podium His Worship, Mayor David Gillen. Thank you very, thank you very much, Warren, for that and those uh, lovely words. It's a true friendship for sure between Warren and I. We've known each other since that first day, going over the contract. <laughs> Check it with the details. Welcome everybody to our State of the City uh, address here today. Um, it's a real honor to be here with you today. And before we get started, of course, uh, before we do any uh, major events here in the city, we do want to acknowledge that we are here on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the Indigenous ancestors of this land, including the Nihilwuk, the Nakawe, the Nakoda, the Dakota, and the Métis. And we respectfully reaffirm our relationship with one another. I want to start by acknowledging, of course, the elected officials who are in attendance here today from the city and neighboring municipalities and First Nations, as well as Member of Parliament Rosemary Falk, who's here, and MLA Jeremy Cockrell. We are very glad to see attendees today at the event from all over the region, and it really does speak to the interest and commitment the region shares in working together to get things accomplished. The City of North Battleford is committed to working in partnership with our municipal and First Nation neighbours, as well as with the provincial and federal governments, as we firmly believe that it is through these partnerships, sorry, I just got to move this mic a little bit so I can see what I'm reading, uh, these partners that we move the city forward and the benefits are not just the cities but also the neighbouring communities as well. Overall, we all work together to make the Battleford's region a great place to work, live, and raise a family, as Warren Williams just mentioned. Now that is a perfect segue into some of the ways that partnerships have developed in the, and strengthened in the last year. 
If you recall, in February of 2021, mere months after being elected as a council, we were faced with a significant issue. The management from the Lighthouse, our emergency shelter, informed us that they would be closing the emergency shelter. Then enter Battleford's Agency Tribal Chiefs as their new operator. I want to personally thank the Chiefs and management of BATC, and I believe representatives are here today, thank you for coming, for stepping up to take on the operator role in September of 2021 to ensure our community continues to have such an important service. The emergency shelter took on a new name as well, Miwas and Kikanao, meaning a safe place in Cree. Our community, like all other communities, has its share of addiction and mental health issues. This service, this service, although a temporary emergency shelter, provides the basic human right for people to have a safe, warm place to go, especially during Saskatchewan winters, which are dangerously cold. Since 2021 to today, BATC has operated the emergency shelter and continues to operate the shelter, but there are challenges especially around continuous funding. In addition, in 2023, the previous owner of the building, the Lighthouse Group, informed BATC that the building would be sold and the community would be without an emergency shelter. Meetings immediately organized with the city and BATC and the chiefs of BATC as well to discuss what to do, and then a meeting was immediately set with the Ministry of Social Services to lobby the provincial government to provide funding for BATC to acquire the building. This advocacy and lobbying paid off as the ministry agreed to provide funding and partnership on the building. Continuing on with the theme of partnerships, regional cooperation and reconciliation, in 2018, the city entered into the Sachikwechik Agreement, establishing a formal partnership between the city, the town of Battleford, and five neighboring First Nations called the Battleford's Regional Community Coalition. The First Nations that signed on to this agreement back in 2018 included Little Pine First Nation, Soto First Nation, Lucky Man First Nation, Sweetgrass, and Mooseman First Nations. The plan was to put politics aside and create meaningful ways to work together on different projects for the betterment of the region as a whole, not just individual municipalities or individual First Nations. Some of the results of this partnership include anti-racism workshops held in the community, coordination of COVID-19 pandemic meetings involving all levels of government, as well as a comprehensive regional emergency management plan that enhances the collective needs and safety of our region. Also as a result of this agreement and the partnership with the First Nations in the town and the city, on June 30th of 2021, the city and the town, in a beautiful ceremony on Finlayson Island in the town of Battleford, signed on to become a member of the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities. This ceremony was well attended by regional elected officials from neighboring municipalities and First Nations. The city of North Battleford is very focused on ways to partner with community members to continue to foster a North Battleford where everyone feels welcome. A number of citywide initiatives and events have taken place since this council was elected to further inclusion and reconciliation efforts in our community. This includes the adoption of a formal land acknowledgement policy that we open every council meeting with, the Treaty 6 and Mady Nation flags that are now permanently displayed in our council chamber, and the renaming of Railway Avenue West to Payac Trail. In addition, in recent years, the city has been working with communities, community partners to create an entire day of events and ceremony for National Day of Truth and Reconciliation on September 30th. Inclusion, uh, sorry, inclusion of both public and private ceremonies at city hall meetings and functions, as well as the creation of urban reserves within the city to further support First Nation communities with their economic development plans. The city is also a firm supporter of the LGBTQ plus community as again, everyone is part of this inclusive community regardless of sexual orientation. The city is a firm supporter of initiatives like Pride Week and supports inclusivity in all our public programming and in all our public facilities. 
Inclusion also means accessibility for those with mobility challenges. Thus, in an effort to improve the accessibility for anyone with mobility issues, wishing to take part in City Council meetings in person, or become a member of City Council, the City has now completed renovation for a new City Council chamber located at the Don Ross Centre. Further removing a barrier to access, the upgrades also include video and screen equipment to allow residents to attend Council meetings virtually through Zoom links should they want to join from home. Again, this is about building accessible and inclusive community so everyone can participate, including the ability to run for council and participate at council meetings in person or online for those with mobility challenges. The new chamber has been designed also to reflect the tremendous history of the Battlefords region and also pays tribute to previous mayors and councils who have served the city of North Battleford. I'm glad to see mayor, former Mayor Hamilton here today as well. Thank you for joining us. The project was completed using a local contractor and the renovation was completed within its budget. Another very interesting partnership was developed in 2023 between the City and Public Safety Canada to find ways to assist with preventing youth from entering gang life. North Battleford, like most communities, is challenged by the fact that so many young people are drawn into this lifestyle. Public Safety Canada has recognized that communities need resources to try to improve this situation. And as such, the city is in partnership with Public Safety Canada and the Battlefords Regional Community Coalition are in the process of completing a multi-year funding and grant application that will deliver programming in the Battlefords that hopefully will specifically target youth between 10 and 20 that are most vulnerable to falling into this lifestyle. It is anticipated that a local service group will also be assisting with this project and promoting the implementation of evidence-based interventions to provide those young people with alternatives to joining gangs. The Battlefords Regional Community Coalition is also assisting in the oversight of this project and was instrumental in preparing the final proposal to Public Safety Canada together with the City of North Battleford. Prior to submission of the grant application to the government, the BRCC, with the assistance of a consultant, held many community meetings and focus groups with agencies and youth, and the key issues identified were a safe youth shelter, transportation, and the ability to get a job that pays living wages. Another key partnership in 2023 was the partnership of the City of North Battleford and the province with regards to funding a new and updated community safety and well-being plan, which was recently presented to our council and approved by our council. As always, the city approached this very holistically and it developed a very comprehensive regional approach by encompassing the city, the town, the RMs, and regional First Nations. The working group also included representation from community social service agencies for children and youth, education school boards, physical and mental health agencies, policing agencies like the RCMP and CSOs, business community were represented, mainly the chamber, and transportation being the North Battleford Transit and Battleford's Handy Bus. We are pleased to have so many professional agencies working in the Battleford's region However, sometimes we are all so busy with our day-to-day -day life that we don't have time to see what the other agencies are doing. And with no one agency tasked to see the total picture, this leads to the silo effect. This community wellness plan will not sit on the shelf. It will be implemented, and to do so, we need to find resources to employ a full-time staff person who will ensure the plan is initiated. Some of the key objectives of the plan including establishing a sobering centre, establishing a 24-hour drop-in centre, developing a homeless outreach program, creating a mobile crisis response team, and enhancing harm reduction services. All of these initiatives 
will need funding, and the full-time staff person will be tasked to work regionally, provincially, and federally to find resources to implement the wellness plan over the next three to four years. As the City of North Battleford continues to champion the values that make it welcoming and inclusive community, while also working towards meaningful reconciliation with our Indigenous residents and neighbours, you may have heard of a recent City Council meeting where Council approved a new project that is being immediately tendered for construction on King Hill, overlooking the River Valley. In partnership with external project donors, including the RCMP 150 Fund, the City has unveiled a project called Tawau Point at King Hill. Tawau, which means welcome in, please, in Plains Cree, is a project conceived and designed with a group of local Indigenous elders who unanimously suggested that a large, prominent teepee erected at King Hill would be a perfect way to welcome people to North Battleford and celebrate our tremendous regional Indigenous heritage. The project, as mentioned, will have a key focal point of interest, a large, prominent teepee, as well as a new playground, picnic tables, and a plaque paying tribute to the original Treaty 6, six Indigenous leaders who were signature, signatories to Treaty 6. As a community, we need to better understand the past so we can better become an inclusive community today and tomorrow where everyone is welcome. Just like the name of the park, Tawau Point, which means welcome or welcoming. Speaking of the key feature and, prom and large prominent teepee that is planned, the total height of the envisioned steel teepee will be determined during the tender process, however, will range anywhere from 50 to 120 feet high, depending on the proposed cost and funding we have available from donors for this project. Now, height-wise, just to put this into perspective, the city's water tower is 100 feet high. So you can possibly imagine having a similar sized teepee at King Hill overlooking the valley. This will be an amazing landmark for our community. This is a project of which I am very proud because it will be a legacy of years to come and it demonstrates that this council's commitment to reconciliation and highlights the beauty and importance of our community's indigenous past present and future. Now I shall shift gears a little bit to talk about another topic that people talk a lot about in our community and that is crime and community safety. For many years now, our city has been ranked number one or two on the Crime Severity Index, otherwise known as the CSI, for communities over 10,000 people. This has been a priority for previous councils and of course is also a priority for this council as we look at ways to lower the city's ranking on this index. We understand the challenges this negative moniker can bring to you, your business, our community, and we have committed significant resources to do our best to tackle this and improve our community's public image, which if you ask almost anyone from this community is misrepresented. Regarding enforcement, we have the largest RCMP detachment in terms of sworn members and civilian members in all of Saskatchewan, here in the Battleford's region. The Battleford's detachment serves not just the city of North Battleford, but also the surrounding Battleford's region, which includes the town of Battleford, the RMs of North Battleford, Battle River, Miota, the Coshan Lake communities, and most of the First Nations around the Battleford's. We have one commander, who oversees the total Battle First Detachment. The commander is here today. Welcome, Inspector Gilbert. Thank you for being here today. The city specifically pays for 37 RCMP officers, and the balance of the officers are paid for by the province. The gang task force is made up of officers paid for by the city. The provincial RCMP officers in the Battle First Detachment include the current crime reduction team we currently have, and the second crime reduction team that will be provided later by the province. You do not have to look very far and very hard about the successes of various units within the Battleford's detachment. The city's gang task force unit was created in 2019 within the Battleford's detachment to primarily tackle 
gang and firearms related offenses in the city. Since this unit's introduction, firearms related offenses in North Battleford alone have been reduced by 58% from 2019 to 2023. While gang activity is a problem in the Battlefords region, we are not alone. Gang activity and crime rates in general are on the rise across Saskatchewan and across Canada. In addition to the RCMP, we also have invested significantly as a city in community safety officers. We, we have a complement of six officers, which per capita is the largest investment by a municipality in Saskatchewan. The community safety officers play an important role in both enforcement and education and deterring crime. There's a, a very common misconception related to the duties of our CSOs that I would like to address here today. The CSOs do not respond to criminal code offenses. If you're wondering why CSOs are typically staffed during the daytime, that is usually the time during which bylaw infractions and statutes like the Traffic Safety Act are violated. However, CSOs will sometimes be on sh shift at night for traffic blitzes or proactively patrolling for impaired drivers. In 2023, the North Battle Community Safety Officers, six of them, received over 18,000 calls for service, a 61% increase from 2022. In addition to the RCMP resources, both city and provincial, and the city's CSOs, we also promote and support community volunteers to assist not with crime enforcement, but assist with deterring and preventing crime. One of the things that I am most proud of is council support for community leaders, leadership groups like Citizens on Patrol. Citizens on Patrol is a volunteer-based organization that completes patrols in pairs or groups of pairs on weekends, and they are given guidance and direction by community safety officers and the RCMP. This group is endorsed and supported by council because the work they do has proven to be a huge deterrent especially for issues like car shopping and trespassing. In 2023, to further enhance the Citizens on Patrol program, the city supported the Citizens on Patrol's grant application for a new dedicated patrol vehicle that is now in place and patrolling our streets at night with volunteer members of the Citizens on Patrol program. 2023 was also in an innovative year in North Battleford with respect to the introduction of two bylaws intended to provide law enforcement, both the RCMP and CSOs, and the city with additional tools in order to tackle crime in residential neighborhoods. These bylaws involved significant public input in their implementation. The first new bylaw in this regard was the late evening alley access bylaw which was introduced after similar bylaws were noted to have success in other communities. In our community, we were aware that many people who were perpetrators of crime, in particular petty crime, were using alleys to unlawfully access properties at night. This bylaw allows members of law enforcement to stop individuals observed using the alleys between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. to determine their purpose for doing so. The purpose of this bylaw is to disrupt criminal behavior, not to collect fines. Exemptions to this bylaw include emergency services personnel, persons or their guests accessing properties adjacent to alleyways, businesses accessing their alleys, and workers providing service delivery. The second bylaw brought in in 2023 was the Protective Services Cost Recovery Bylaw. This bylaw is a complaints-driven bylaw intended to give the city a tool to deal with what some may refer to as problem properties. If a specific property were to receive six calls for service from either the police, CSOs, or our fire department within a year, it allows city administration to issue a warning giving the property owner 30 days to remedy the issues necessitating frequent calls for service. Should the property owner fail to address the issues, the city has the option to bill the property owner for the cost the city has incurred for
for excessively using the services of the RCMP, community safety officers, and the fire department. This bylaw was put in place due to the escalating number of calls observed at certain problem properties. This bylaw makes property owners more accountable for activities happening at or within their respective properties by themselves or through their tenants. Exemptions to this bylaw include medical calls, as well as matters relating to child protection, the Mental Health Act, domestic or interpersonal violence, or calls to commercial properties. We are working very hard to change the narrative around Crime Town that permeates social media. Now, speaking of the Crime Town moniker that permeates the media, I mentioned when I ran for mayor that I would do my utmost to change this as no community, big or small, should be ranked against another from a crime perspective and the associated Crime Town label attached. Crime statistics are complex and presentation of crime statistics can be very misleading and very detrimental to the development of a community. Thus, my, myself and our city manager, Randy Pachter, we developed the CSI conference idea to bring together other communities who suffer the same Crime Town moniker to discuss, discuss what can be done to look at other ways of presenting crime statistics that do not unfairly present our communities as unsafe. Now I'd like to speak a little bit about that Crime Severity Index Conference. On February 29th of this year, as organized by the City of North Battleford, municipal leaders from nine other communities and one First Nation, as well as representatives from FSIN, the RCMP, Stats Canada, along with other academics, came together to discuss the limitations of the current CSI and the negative consequences of ranking communities on crime statistics and the community devastation that it causes. As someone who has a background in data analysis, it was important to me to work with administration to do a deep dive into the derivation of the CSI and determine after 15 years of use, is it still effective or is it effective at all for communities large and small? Or is there a better way to present crime statistics? Let me say this right now that this exercise is not to hide our crime statistics. Stats Canada has both a duty and legal obligation to present crime stats. However, how they are presented is within Stats Canada's discretion. This is exactly the point being raised by our group. Are there other ways of doing this that do not unfairly paint communities as unsafe as communities cannot get safer without community growth and expertise? both of which are seriously hampered when crime town images are annually portrayed. In looking at the data, the communities at the conference, not just the city of North Battleford, but the all the communities at the conference, along with academic experts present at this conference, determined that the current CSI as a method of reporting crime has significant limitations. I will just mention a couple of these limitations. Number one, that hub communities like North Battleford, Lloyd Minster, Thompson, Manitoba, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, have a very large fluctuating transient population, experience higher than normal CSI numbers as this transient population is not reflected in this calculation. Number two, communities with effective police forces will inherently see a spike in crime severity index. Basically, the more you enforce, the worse it gets. Number three, every single community on the top 10 reported list of ranked communities with population of 10,000 or more were all in Western Canada, all had a significant Indigenous population, and all are hub communities. Number four, removing the 10,000 person reporting threshold, North Battleford would rank number 16 overall for RCMP detachments in the province of Saskatchewan for highest crime severity index. And the city would not even make the top 30 in Canada. Number five, the crime severity index negatively impacts the reconciliation process, creates racism and division in our affected communities and causes additional harm 
to Indigenous peoples. Number six, as noted by our academic at the conference, there are other models that can be used. And the results, interestingly, change dramatically, model to model. Thus, we question, why this model? Number seven, ranking should never happen. I mentioned that earlier in my speech. In fact, the United States of America, equivalent of Stats Canada, strongly discourages any ranking of communities when releasing crime stats. So in Canada, why do we do this? In 2009, the CSI was developed by Stats Canada in conjunction with the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police as a way to better look at crime by weighting crime, not purely looking at number of instances. It's been 15 years and it's time to evaluate the effectiveness of the CSI and fairness to both large and small communities. At the recent CSI conference at the end of February, every community in attendance voiced their shared concerns about this annual community ranking released by Stats Canada. In no way has any of these communities suggested the numbers should be hidden. The public call to action issued by the group of communities present was to request that Stats Canada and the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, because they do have an opinion on this matter as well, consider halting the release of the public rankings until after they have consulted with smaller communities such as ours and Indigenous communities as well. We have crime in North Battleford and there's crime in the Battleford's region. There is no denying this. However, this data was intended for police forces who are equipped to interpret the information and apply the data appropriately. We are a hub community whose population triples or quadruples during any given day, but the CSI stats are divided solely on our base population of just under 14,000, which dramatically skews the numbers negatively, negatively from our perspective. We all collectively suffer from this mischaracterization of our region and challenging a federal body which is causing us reputational damage and economic harm by publicly pitting against other municipalities in Canada is something I believe is our duty to challenge. And I'm happy to report, as of today, since our conference in February, late February this year, follow-up communication thus far with Stats Canada has been very positive. And I am optimistic that this collective lobbying effort representing four provinces will be successful in tackling this very complex issue. Let me now just change topics to economic development. While the city tackles the issues outlined earlier with respect to the, how the publicly damaging crime severity index rankings impacts our recruiting efforts, it also impacts our ability to attract and retain businesses. We have placed a great deal of emphasis as a council on economic development over the last one and a half years with the hiring of an economic development officer in late 2022. With the position split between the city of North Battleford and Destination Battlefords, the manager has a number of initiatives underway, including surveying of local businesses to provide insights to us as elected officials, highlighted marketing materials to outline the benefits of living and working in a smaller community like North Battleford, and developing a marketing plan for land sales of all types, in, in particular in the Parsons Industrial Park and the Southeast Quadrant where we are here today. Council also recently approved the sale of a number of land parcels to Mady Nation Saskatchewan for the development of a new holistic space for Mady community members the details of which will be shared by Midi Nation when available. We also continue to work with the city's largest private land owner, Red Pheasant First Nation. The investment by Red Pheasant Cree Nation into building the Eagles Landing Plaza off Territorial Drive and 15th Avenue has been an important milestone for Indigenous economic development in our community. And it has been very exciting to see this development happening in real time over the last few months. We have and will continue to support the search for tenants to occupy this beautiful new commercial space on urban reserve land in North Battleford. Our city administration has also worked tirelessly on assisting Red Pheasant to integrate city utilities and other city services 
into the Red Pheasant Urban Reserve, and we'll continue to work together for mutually beneficial growth. Eagles Landing Plaza is slated to open this summer. We look forward to attending the grand opening along with leadership of Red Pheasant First Nation. Earlier this year, I was also fortunate to attend the International Council of Shopping Centres Trade Show for Western Canada held in British Columbia along with our Economic Development Manager. We leveraged the platform to spotlight city land for prospective development and we were able to outline the competitive advantages for establishing presence within North Battleford to approximately, approximately 18 developers and retailers at the show. This show also provided valuable insight to learn about what specifically the developers are looking for as they consider future investments in our community. In attendance at the show was also representatives of Red Pheasant First Nation. And thus we held many joint meetings together with prospective tenants for the previously mentioned Eagles Landing project. We also are growing economically, not purely from new business, but also through the further development of a hub for advanced education. We are lucky to have a post-secondary institution in the city of North Battleford that specializes in many programs and services that also have affiliations with other post-secondary educational institutions, for example, the University of Saskatchewan and the University of Regina. In fact, the Northwest College is so popular that it has outgrown their current space and thus in 2023, with the assistance of the province, renovated significant space at the Territorial Mall to continue expanding program offerings in the Battlefords. I'm happy to see Dr. Elquist here today and your team um, because they have been very open to working with the city and other regional partners to explore ways to further expand programming through the development of a new campus here in the Battlefords. I can confidently say that this council is highly supportive of the consultation of a new community campus for Northwest College here in North Battleford. In the last couple of years, the city has worked very closely with the college leadership and a site has been, many sites have been reviewed within the, within the city area. High level discussions have been ongoing for the last couple of years, but last year, 2023, saw further positive breakthroughs on this exciting, transformative community project. A new college campus would be excellent for our region and would keep our community members and maybe even community family members closer to home. As more people get educated, the more they get lifted from underemployment and unemployment. Thus, the Battlefords region will become more prosperous. People can finally attain a living wage, as was one of the issues raised when discussing why do young people join gangs. I'm very happy here to, to, sorry, to stand here today knowing that the provincial government, and thank you to MLA Cockrell for all your work, has committed planning dollars to this project per the recently re released provincial budget. This was a culmination of many hours of work by the College Board of Governors, their administration, the City of North Battleford, administration of council, as well, of course, is MLA Cockrell's office. Another interesting project that will spur our economy was announced in October of 2023, when the provincial government, through discussions with the city and the RCMP, announced the former liquor store at 101st Street would house expanded RCMP op office space and it would become a Northwest training hub for F Division, which is the RCMP equivalent of the Saskatch province of Saskatchewan. Thank you again, Emily Cockrell, for your work on this file. This will mean additional economic benefit for our community as we draw in members for training from all over the northern part of the province. This will mean increased use of our hotels, our airport, and our local restaurants. We are grateful for the investments by the province and the RCMP and look forward to the grand opening hopefully in 2024. This demonstrates that the city is serious about attracting new business into the community. Maybe it is not obvious to everyone about why we spend so much energy and resources in attracting new business. Let me mention just a couple benefits. Firstly, by growing more business, we fill gaps, we fill gaps, I'm sorry, that exist in our current business community already in the city. This allows our residents to shop more local and we don't have so much what we call retail leakage to the city of Saskatoon. 
Of course, we cannot be Saskatoon, we'll never be Saskatoon. However, but given our size of our, our sizable trading area, we should be much more commercially developed than we are. Number two, the more business we attract, the more property values in the city rise as more jobs are created and more people move to the community and with the demand for housing comes higher prices of housing. Lastly, the more business we attract, the more we can spread the burden of municipal taxation over more taxpayers. The costs to run the city do not change because another business arrives or another family arrives. In fact, about half of the cost of the city is fixed. What does that mean, fixed? Well, let's look at some examples. Mayor and council cost does not change. Senior administration cost does not change. The cost of operating recreation facilities actually goes down as more people are utilizing the facilities and paying fees, thus less subsidizing from general taxpayers. I would also say that anecdotally, it must be the correct strategy, as almost all cities, big and small, have an economic development department which pursues the same strategy. Also, if our community continues not to grow or even only maintains the same population, our municipal revenue sharing grants from the province may fall. I say the word may, as other cities in the province who are growing will take some of our grants when census figures are published every four years and the grant distribution is recalculated by the province. I agree that taxes are high for precisely the reasons I just mentioned. Costs are growing, but the city is not. And this coupled with the fact that we all enjoy exceptional services and facilities in North Battleford. For example, citywide snow removal, the innovation plex where we sit today, our airport, a full-time composite fire department that provides lower home insurance rates for residents, and the largest municipal RCMP detachment in the province, including the only municipal gang task force in Saskatchewan. I should also note that the city council, our city council, has always permitted the gang task force to work outside the city in emergencies and when needed, and we have never issued an invoice for service outside the city. These services and facilities make North Battleford a great place to live, but they come at a large cost as the taxes are high in North Battleford. I recognize that, but just to cut the cost to lower tax is a complex topic, and a topic that requires serious deliberation and community input, as the effects would be felt throughout the community. Recently, it was suggested at the Chamber Power Hour that the city should not be trying to attract new business to the community, or new residents to the community. I was told to focus on reducing taxes for current businesses. As the previous finance director in both the city and town, no one is more concerned about tax equity and fairness than myself. The municipal tax system needs to be as fair and equitable as possible. What is the process if one taxpayer feels their taxes are too high? The first step in the process is to look at the assessed value of the property. Every property in the city is assessed a value based on mass appraisal. This process is not done by the city, but instead done by a provincial third party called Saskatchewan Assessment Management Agency. This includes residential and commercial properties. Why do we do this, you ask? It is, it is part of the ad valerum system of taxation that is widely adopted throughout North America. Values are assigned to properties, and those values are used by municipalities to divide up what's known as the tax pie. What is the tax pie, you ask? The tax pie is the cost of running the municipality after other revenues are deducted, like provincial grants and user fees. How does the city divide up the tax pie? This is what's known as tax policy. How much will commercial businesses pay versus residential properties? In the city of North Battleford, we have an agreed tax split between the commercial and residential taxes 
and commercial property owners do pay their portion of property taxes based on this ratio of the tax pie. And there is a reason, and that is commercial businesses can use property tax as a business expense and reduce their commercial tax, while residential tax cannot be deducted from our personal income tax. These municipal tax policy arrangements are common in other municipalities, and this arrangement that still exists today in the city of North Battleford has been in place for decades and was arrived at through extensive community consultation at that time. So what can be done if a commercial business owner feels the tax policy is not right or appropriate in the city? If the commercial business owner feels his taxes are still too high and wants change to tax policy, as I just mentioned, then the business can approach all of council as a delegation at a council meeting. As you can appreciate, shifting taxes away from one property means we have to charge some other property more to make up for the lost property to keep our tax pie whole. As you can also appreciate, council needs to think of fairness and equity to all taxpayers, big or small, as any change in tax policy will have consequences either throughout the commercial sector or the city as a whole. Council would not make this type of decision unless thorough data is provided and the full impact of the potential change is known. This council has never officially received a request to change tax policy in the city. However, we remain open to discussing if such a detailed request comes forward that fully demonstrates the impact of such a change to the overall city and all taxpayers, commercial or residential, large or small. Now I would like to speak to a few major projects undertaken in 2023. While the upcoming development on King Hill is an exciting beacon for our community, the City of North Battleford's partnership with Sonova's Energy to revitalize the lighting on the community's water tower was an important project for Council. The new LED, LED lighting on the water tower has received exceptional feedback from our community, particularly with the addition of the colored lights for various days or weeks of celebration or remembrance. Especially meaningful was the opportunity to unveil the new water tower lighting on National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, September 30th of last year, with many community members in attendance. We have seen some incredible photography and videos with the new water tower lighting featured, and we look forward to lighting up our community for many years to come. Also in early 2023, Council joined in a special pushing in ceremony to welcome a new fire engine pumper truck for the North Battle for Fire Department. This truck replaced an engine that had reached the end of its life cycle, and the new apparatus joined the fleet in February of last year. Together with our Finance Department, our Protective Services Department continues to look at cost-saving measures, like issuing joint tenders with other fire services in the province, or proactively planning and using of funding reserves over a number of years to lessen the burden of capital purchases on our community's taxpayers. If you noticed during the 2024 budget deliberation in late 2023, you will have noted that the fire chief is working with our finance department to plan for the purchase of a new aerial ladder truck in the coming years. The cost since we have purchased our current truck has more than doubled. A new aerial ladder truck is now over $2 million compared to less than $1 million when we, current, when we purchased the current unit. This is an opportune time to mention that our current aerial ladder truck saved local businesses millions recently when it was deployed to attack an aggressive commercial property fire last month. The use of the, air, uh, the aerial ladder truck along with the actions of our fire department and also surrounding fire departments who responded prevented the loss of multiple businesses and what could have been a much larger fire event. In 2023, the city also, <clears throat> excuse me, had numerous discussions with many groups interested in the development of a new regional arena as a replacement for our aging access communication center. Until this project comes to realization, we are working diligently with administration to ensure we can maximize the life cycle of the current facility to keep up with the needs of the community and the region. 
The 2024 city budget includes hiring a consultant to develop a plan to replace the Access Communication Center. Thus, we will then have a shovel-ready plan on hand in order to apply for grants when they become available. While the maintenance is costly at the ACC or the Access Communication Center, it is important for the, the, this council I'm sorry, to invest in things that are important to our community members and to highlight that we view active participation in a healthy lifestyle as important opportunities for our community members. I'm also so pleased that there are provincial level sporting events being hosted in our city, like the Saskatchewan 55 Games, which are returning to our community this June. Also this year, the Provincial Snowmobiles uh, Rally Festival was held here in February. Uh, actually, we were probably the only place in the province that had snow at the time. Then look what happened after that. We kept praying for snow and it just kept coming. This event included a newly approved urban trail leading to our hotels in the southeast quadrant, this area of the city, to accommodate easier access to the event. When I spoke at the closing banquet of this event, the participants expressed their thanks and appreciation to the city for the urban trail in the city, which greatly enhanced the event. Now I'd like to speak a little bit about city finances. Regarding financial shape of the city, the city's balance sheet is strong. The city is able to meet all its obligations when due. Our reserves, which is, are basically our funds for future pur purchases in the city, are fully funded with cash. And our audits remain clean and without a qualified opinion, which means our financial statements present fairly in all material aspects. In addition, our finance department has won numerous financial reporting awards over the last few years. <clears throat> That being said, we have a property taxes owing issue within the city. Due to re relaxation of tax collection during COVID and turnover of finance directors at the city, we are now on our fourth finance director in the last seven years since I left in 2017. However, I have all the confidence in the current finance director and the finance department as a whole, and I'm sure this issue will be brought under control and resolved in the next couple years. Tax fairness also means everyone must pay. Let me say that again. Tax fairness means everyone must pay. Thus, tax enforcement is a serious matter and will be taken seriously. <clears throat> we have seen some rather high tax and utility increases over the last few years. However, most of the rather large increases over the last few years has been to a great extent beyond the control of administration and council. For example, the unionization of the RCMP over the last few years has greatly raised costs associated with the RCMP contract. And I want to say at this point, I don't begrudge that in one bit. Our RCMP officers work very hard in a very dangerous job. They deserve everything they get. We have also been dealing with reduced provincial operating grants and unprecedented inflation Thus, together, this has created budget challenges. In addition, the city has made significant investments, as I mentioned earlier in my speech, contributing also to the rise in tax and utility rates in recent years. No one likes rising taxes and fees, myself included. However, I can assure you these increases were necessary in order to get major projects done. Our council has always been transparent and willing to make the necessary investments that we believe will position our city for long-term sustainable growth, prosperity, and quality of life for our residents. This sometimes means raising taxes and utility fees beyond what some people may seem as reasonable. However, we will only burden, burden the next council with more expense if we do not invest today at today's cost versus delaying the cost at tomorrow's cost which is only higher. My point is that pay now or pay a lot more later, and it could even be threatening to the public or the staff. A prime example of this happened right here in the city of North Battleford in 2001. For those that weren't here in the community at the time, the city in 2001 experienced an outbreak of gastrointestinal illness in approximately 50% of the city. This resulted in millions of lawsuits. 
millions of dollars in lawsuits. Now, although there were many reasons for the outbreak, one of the key reasons was that the city had some of the lowest water rates in Saskatchewan and near zero rate increases for the decade of the 90s, despite calls from administration to raise rates and make the necessary investments. In closing, I want to thank you all for sitting through a rather lengthy state of the city. And before Q&A, I want to discuss my plans for the future. And I want to speak about the upcoming municipal election slated for Wednesday, November 13, 2024, this year. This council has tried to develop inclusive policies in the city, including signing on to the coalition of, of inclusive municipalities in 2000, uh, 2021. This includes access to city council by building a new inclusive council chamber where not only can members of the public with mobility issues now attend council meetings, but also can run for council. Also, as another measure to improve inclusivity and knowledge about running for municipal office, the city will host an open house in the fall of this year, after the summer, where members of the public can attend and learn about the process of running for council or mayor and the type of work you would be doing if elected. I will be there personally to answer any questions anyone may have, and this leads me to the next topic, my future. I'm officially announcing today that I will not be running again in the upcoming election. It was never my intention to make a career as a politician. I already have a career I'm very proud of, and I left my career four years ago to work full time as your mayor, as I truly believe that is what is required to keep moving the city forward. The mayor is not elected just to oversee council meetings. It's also the important time spent between council meetings assisting administration and quarterbacking economic development, social development, and regional cooperation on major initiatives and projects that affect all municipalities and First Nations in our region. As mentioned, I left my career four years ago, and now, as I will soon be an empty nest parent, I will head back to my career as I look at opportunities, both in Canada and abroad. Who knows, maybe someday I may return to politics, but given my age, I'm not young anymore, I only have a certain amount of time left for my career, thus my decision not to run again. It's not because I don't want to represent this great city. Next month will be my 10th year anniversary of entering the world of municipal government. For 10 years, I have served the Battlefords, and yes, not just the city of North Battleford, where I was three years finance director, but also four years as your mayor, and also three years as finance director at the town of Battleford, for a total of 10 years service in the Battlefords. I have always saw the Battlefords as a region. I never saw just the town, or just the city, or just the RM. The Battlefords is unique, many governments serving essentially the same people. The residents see no political boundaries. These are lines on a map. However, the true potential of the Battlefords will only be reached if we work together. The citizens of the region expect all the elected mayors, reeves, chiefs and councillors to work together in harmony for the betterment of everybody. I am proud to say that we have come a long way as a region in this regard, however, the work must continue in this way. We cannot return to each government in their silo. The needs of the region are too great. As we look at new regional arena to replace the Access Communication Centre, and also a new regional care centre in Battleford to replace the aging facility there as well. The region must work together to make these projects possible from a financial perspective. So what is my overall assessment of the state of the city? I can honestly say we are not perfect, but what municipality or organization is perfect? The most important point, I'm almost finished, sorry. The most important point is that we are continuously striving to improve, and we are improving, and we are trending in the right direction on many, many aspects. I know that you as residents sometimes cannot see the improvement so easily, but I see it as I work in it every day. Let us all remember that although we have challenges, we also have opportunities and strengths. Let's all be optimistic and look at the glass half full, not half empty. In closing, you elected the seven of us on council to re represent you back in 2020. 
I truly believe we have worked very hard since to improve the inclusivity and quality of life in our city and the region as a whole. Thank you all for being here today. I hope you found my address to be informative. As this is my last State of the City address, I want to thank my council and thank administration for all the hard work over the last year and of course since we took office in 2020. Not quite done yet. Today I'm also going to start a little bit of a tradition here um, and I hope that future mayors in the city will continue when they have State of the City. I think every year we should also honour um, somebody with inside the City of North Battleford who is uh, an exemplary employee. And I wanted to start this tradition tonight here um, by highlighting one individual that I thought was a pretty exemplary employee in the city of, Sask uh, city of North Battleford. Oh, maybe Saskatoon as well, I'm not sure. But. I have we I've worked with a lot of exceptional people and the list is long, but I do want to highlight one person in particular that has worked in the finance trenches with me both in the city and in the town. That person is Gail Adams sitting right here. Wait, give a wave, Gail. Gail, <clears throat> Gail worked for the city in senior finance roles for over 32 years, even though she's so young before retiring in 2016. Then I asked her to come out of retirement and assist me again when I went to the town in 2018. Even though I became mayor, even though I became mayor of North Battle after three years at the town, Gail stayed on at the town for another three years after me for a total of six years and just last week retired for the second time with another six years of service to the Battlefords. I think one more. Over 38 years service in the Battlefords region, folks. And I notice how you say the word Battlefords region. It's important. Gail is the reason <clears throat> I was so successful as finance director on both sides of the river. A little secret I'm acknowledging here today. Thank you, Gail, from myself and the Battlefords region. And I promise I will not ask you to come out of retirement again so you can enjoy time, your world earned retirement with your husband, Barry Adams, who also, by the way, served the city of North Battleford as a community safety officer for over 11 years. Thank you, Gail and Barry, perfect examples of the quality people who work at or have worked at the municipal government in the Battleford region. Now, before questions, I want to thank administration for putting on this function today. I want to also thank our sponsors, B Plus, Napa Auto Parts, I want to thank the media, of course, for attending and providing coverage of this event. Thank you, and I wish you all the very best in the future. The Battlefords will always hold a special place in my heart. Thank you. Now, I know it's like uh, 10 or 5 to 1. I spoke a long time. I see you're still awake, which is good. We do have time for a couple quick questions. Uh, and by the way, you can always email me questions at the city if you don't feel like standing up in public and asking questions. Uh, my email is very easy, mayor at cityofnb.ca. So any questions can uh, be, be sent afterwards as well. Does anybody have anything uh, they'd like to get off their chest besides taxation? <laughs> it's like death, right? Mm, taxes. Uh, where's Candace at? Where? Anyways, thank you all. I guess uh, I must have uh, I must have answered all your questions. And thank you. And it's been a privilege working with you. And I want to thank Candace, our communication coordinator. She does so much great work, helping me with great speeches and and keeping me in my uh, in my lane. So thank you very much. And thank you, Candace. Thank you all for coming. If you'd like to share your feedback on the program you just watched, contact us today.